And the way I kind of lay this stuff out, we go through fun functions. <laughs> functions, then anatomy, then the physiology. Functions of the blood. Well, first, we have distribution and transportation. And basically there, we have the obvious. We're going to deliver oxygen to the tissue and then CO2 to the lungs. And guys, if you don't have the note packet, don't write, because you're going to be able to fill it in with the PowerPoints. Just watch. Don't, don't, don't get carpal tunnel syndrome. It isn't worth it. We're going to deliver nutrients from the digestive tract oh, yeah. to the cells. Then we're going to take metabolic waste from the cells and get it to the appropriate organ for um, removal. And also we're going to deliver hormones to their appropriate endocrine organs or to the target organs. Second on the list, blood does regulation. Little less known function. But here we're going to take body heat and absorb it and distribute it. How many people work out? Get hot? Yeah, where does the heat build up first? My head. Once <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking back there, you always complain about the heat. <laughs> but when you work out, where does it build up? Muscles, right? Where did, what did we talk about in AP1 that was so dangerous about heat buildup? There's like, oh crap, AP1. Right? What does heat do that's so bad? Oh, it protein. fries your protein. It fries your proteins, right? What was the magic word? Denature. Very good. Yay. It denatures your protein. So if we allow that heat to build up in muscle, which is pure protein, right? Actin and myosin, I'll fill that one in, right? <laughs> Actin and myosin fibers, if it denatured those, it would destroy our muscle proteins. So we got to take that heat and we got to move it someplace else. That's the job of the blood. That's why you heat up all over. We also use it to normalize pH. There's a lot of buffers in blood to help get rid of metabolic wastes, which are usually acids, so that we don't build up too much of an acidic condition. We also use it to maintain an adequate fluid volume. We are terrestrial. We need to maintain a certain amount of fluid, but if we get too high, then our cells are going to explode. Remember osmosis? That's going to be important in AP2. All right, we use it for protection. What happens if you sever part of your body? <coughs> What happens if your heart doesn't have enough blood going through it? Stop beating, right? Yeah, so we need to prevent blood loss, and blood does that itself by clotting. We also have a number of cells in blood that prevent infection. The immune system uses the circulatory system as well. So all the white cells are actually in the blood as well. So protection both from loss of blood or blo loss of fluids through clotting and also the immune system through infection protection. Now, composition. Well, the composition and physical characteristics of blood, it makes up about 8% of body weight. Remember back to histology, it's actually considered a connective tissue. How did we define connective tissues? I'm trying to kind of rattle the rust off the brain cells here a little bit today. It's like, man, I didn't think you were going to make us do anything today, right? <laughs> we were just going to hand out the syllabus. We were going to go home. I didn't bring that. <laughs> Connective tissue. How is it different from other tissues? Striated it goes with the muscle tissue. Good. Good suggestion. Matrix. Matrix. Big buzzword, right? It is cells and matrix. So what we've got is a cellular component, and the matrix for blood is mostly liquid. We'll get into the matrix in a little bit. Volume, 5.6 liters for males, 4.5 for females. Normal pH of blood, that should pop to mind, 7.35 to 7.45. Now, when it comes to my class, you don't have to memorize all these numbers, because all you have to do is pick up a book, look on the inside cover, and it usually gives you all of those numbers. 
The pH, I think it is important to know that one. That one's you're going to have to be second nature if you're in a health field. This stuff, not so much. So I'll tell you which numbers are important and which ones are not. This one's important. This one's just, you know, eh, nice general knowledge. Let's move on to the next slide type of stuff. Okay? All right. Again, it's connective tissue. The matrix is the plasma portion. And the cells are what we call the formed elements. Once again, this is anatomy and physiology. We're going to have at least three words for every single thing we talk about. Right? Remember that from AP1? Yeah. Got more vocabulary than we know what to do with. All right. The plasma is the non-cellular component, makes up about 55% of a blood sample. So if you took out someone's blood and you'd spin it in a centrifuge, the heavy stuff goes to the bottom, the light stuff stays at the top. The plasma is what comes to the top. And it's not really a mistake that it's kind of urine colored, because actually that's what gets filtered by the kidneys. Okay. So here's the plasma, sits up on top, and it makes up about 55% of the total sample. The formed elements, or the cellular part, is made up of three components. First are the erythrocytes, or the red blood cells. Take the word apart, erythro means red, site is a cell. So every time you see erythro, we're talking Red. Nobody has on anything that's a red today. Leukocytes are white. Leuco means white. Lastly are the platelets which are used for clotting. Platelets are sometimes called thrombocytes. Your book is going to go into a big, long explanation of the difference between a platelet and a thrombocyte. Maria says, I don't care. <laughs> Just pass on through that explanation. Same thing. Okay, we aren't going to get too different. All right, so if we take a look at this, these little discs are the red blood cells. The big ones that have nuclei are the leukocytes, or the white blood cells. And then these little guys here are platelets, or thrombocytes. Okay? All the other stuff that you can't see in the background is plasma. Right? That's a blood sample. So far, so good? Yeah, we like this stuff. It's easy. Unfortunately, the first kind of week of lecture over blood is when you get hit with all the really big names, but we'll manage. All right, let's take a look at plasma. Plasma itself is 90% water and just a bunch of solutes. The plasma proteins include things like albumin. Albumin is a pH buffer. It's actually the same thing as egg white. Uh, it's just in our body, it's long and stringy, basically. It's a pH buffer and a transport protein. And it contributes to plasma osmotic pressure. You know we're going to come back to that and make